Unexpectedly enough, the ACCC regained consciousness for long enough recently to publish an entire PDF. They really do have remarkable new medications these days. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au, new cars cheap, Australia only, website, card. In this report, I'm going to show you how one government in Australia is more misleading and deceptive on environmental claims than any business could ever hope to be, even a car maker. And I'm going to use the ACCC's new document as a litmus test of sorts for the kind of bullshit conduct governments just take for granted these days. The ACCC's, oh my God, I'm awake document is called Environmental and Sustainability Claims. 39 whole pages. That's a lot of potential butt wipes if you print it out on recycled vegan paper. Reuse and wokeness is such an essential part of getting to net zero, let's not forget. Repurposing this kind of fine work in pursuit of distal end, digestive tract maintenance and hygiene really can help. Just saying. The wholesale adoption of EVs will not, because it cannot, happen fast enough to have sufficient impact on greenhouse. Cars are therefore a greenhouse sideshow. Most eco-claims on EVs are fundamentally horseshit, because most companies and most governments are run by proper sociopaths who just care about how stuff makes you feel and how you react to it. How effective it actually is, well, that's kind of irrelevant. My advice? Try to get four productive wipes per A4 sheet. Just don't be tempted to go double-sided if you catch my drift. That kind of over-enthusiastic commitment, it's not going to end well. Today's video is sponsored by Olight. So check this out. This is one of my favorite Olights. It's called a Swivel Pro Max. There's a family of these things and this one is the biggest. It's insanely versatile with really solid applications, camping and working in the shed or under the house or anywhere else that's dark and generally inhospitable. And let's face it, if you break down at the roadside and the alternative is changing a tyre on the blackest night ever by Braille, then I'd suggest that this thing is a substantial upgrade. Now they call it a swivel because obviously it swivels. It swivels 180 degrees this way and it swivels 150 degrees this way. So plenty of orientation options and you can mount it in a variety of different ways. It's got this carabiner so you can hang it over a tree branch or from a cord on the inside of a camper or a tent and if you can find a steel column or a suitable beam thingo in the ceiling, whatever, boom, there's your mounting option. It's got magnets on the base. If your phone goes dead unexpectedly and you need to get your comms back up and running, it's got USB out, so you can use it as a power bank as well for electronic devices, which is pretty useful. Now, as for lighting options, there's plenty of those. You get your standard white light in a variety of different brightnesses. Then there's red mode for warning and flashing red mode. So if you break down over a crest and you're in a dangerous location and the car can't be moved, this might be a really good option for warning approaching motorists that you've inconveniently stopped in a bad location. This thing is IPX4 waterproof, so it's rated against water ingress. It's quite environmentally rugged and the plastic is good quality stuff that takes quite a few knocks. I keep mine permanently mounted on the wall just over there because I use it so often here in the shed where it's a complete godsend. It's yours for under a hundred bucks right now on sale. Normally 130, I'll have all the details in the description. And thank you very much to Olight for sponsoring this video. The ACCC document is basically draft advice for car makers and other businesses on how to avoid being deceptively misleading greenwashing mother lovers. Example, claims that are likely to be false or misleading. A business has begun designing and manufacturing electric vehicles and claims that it, quote, creates 
zero emission electric vehicles, unquote. This claim only considers the emissions produced while the vehicle is being driven. It does not account for the emissions generated, for example, during the manufacturing processes or when charging the vehicle. While it is true that the vehicle produces zero emissions while being driven, this claim risks creating the impression that the vehicle produces zero emissions for its entire life cycle and misleading consumers in contravention of the Australian consumer law. The business could instead qualify the claim that its vehicles produce zero exhaust emissions while driving. I'm tipping rather a lot of interns in rather a lot of advertising agencies are going to be snout down and butt up in the rewriting of endless web pages of car maker marketing drivel just in time for Christmas. Not that this generally isn't a pleasing aesthetic. Consider the full life cycle of your product or service. More advice from the ACCC there. Of course, that means senior executive bean counters and Marketing geniuses will have to go back to school and actually, you know, pay attention this time. Because life cycle is a fundamentally grown up concept. It includes, of course, the raw materials, the components, the manufacturing processes, where that manufacturing happens, the waste and the byproducts, the packaging, the end use, end of life and disposal, and the overall environmental impact. Can't just cherry pick. If you consider all of these things, let's not forget, EVs actually start to look a bit shit. But you can't just claim your electric car is a ticket on the express to fully charged utopia because it farts only Chanel number no. 9 on days that don't end in Y and it's also inconveniently packed with toxic cobalt mined by children, perhaps in the Congo. And when you're done with it, the battery's probably just going to go into landfill, etc. These are kind of inconvenient truths, aren't they? In theory, policing this kind of environmental horseshit is a very good idea because that particular term, zero emissions vehicle, it's an intelligence test. If you actually buy into that crap, you are a fool. We went from external combustion, like this steam engine, in which the combustion occurs externally to the working fluid, and then we move to internal combustion, where the working fluid and the combustion are essentially the same thing. And now we're moving to EVs, or remote combustion vehicles, as they should more properly be known. That's where the combustion happens hundreds of kilometres away, as coal and or gas is burned to make the electricity on which they run. Small print should not hide the truth. You cannot rely on disclaimers, disclosures or clarifications buried in small print or otherwise not displayed prominently enough compared to your headline claim as an excuse for making misleading environmental claims. Any information that you provide in small print or qualifications should not conflict with the overall message of your claims. Golly gee, Jim Bob, did you feel that, how the earth just rocked a little bit? Every marketing manager in the nation just took three little steps closer to the defibrillator. This is such a foundational aspect of marketing, suddenly under attack. Like if we can't hide behind those disclaimers in three-point Helvetica extra fine, like, dude, the gig is up. Not a children's toy, batteries not included, individual results may vary, limited time only, each item sold separately, individual shoppers named Trev only, some assembly required only while stocks last, at participating retailers only, this treatment might cause your frickin' head to explode or result in other nasty side effects may not be a real product. Still, of all the environmental claims ever, sustainable, net zero, carbon neutral, recyclable, like it never ends, does it? Of all the nauseating self-righteous bullshit claims, zero emissions takes the absolute cake. The only zero emissions product, of course, is the one that you don't make. How the actual fuck anyone can say zero emissions of a vehicle made of steel, aluminium, plastic, rubber, glass, fabrics, paint, and of course with a 400 kilo battery pack that's just jammed full of rare earth materials, how you could say that is just beyond me. If you can say it with a straight face, 
That's like grabbing reality by the lapels and just kneeing it in the epistemic nuts. You'd have to be an A-grade dipshit to make such a claim, or a willful bullshitter, or a state government in Australia, specifically Victoria. They are weapons-grade environmental bullshitters in Victoria. Thank you so much, Victorian government, for this next bit. They had this delightfully uplifting 88-page monument to the art of environmental untruth entitled Victoria's Zero Emissions Vehicle Roadmap. It's online right now at energy.vic.gov.au. You can download it and print it too if you'd like. Excellent fodder for that clean-up in aisle two we were discussing earlier. Even better than the ACCC's one personal opinion. By 2030, we will see 50% of light vehicles sold in Victoria with zero emissions technology. We know accelerating to zero emissions is in the best interests of our community, environment and economy. See what I mean? It really is export grade. You can smell that from Queensland, as well as other countries such as Western Australia. That statement in particular is attributable to the Honourable Lily D'Ambrosio, Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, Minister for Solar Homes. So let's get a few things straight, shall we, Lily? According to the ACCC, you are being misleading and deceptive right there. And this is a bad look, even for a politician. If a house uses 15 kilowatt hours of electricity per day, According to Lilly's own Essential Services Commission, it's emitting 5.8 tonnes of CO2 equivalent every year because that's how this works. If there's an alleged filthy CO2 belching SUV, like, I don't know, Kia Sportage diesel, perhaps, in the driveway, that vehicle is going to emit 163 grams per kilometre according to the combined cycle scientific test. And if you multiply that by the 11,100 kilometres driven annually on average by passenger vehicles, according to Ausstat's latest survey of motor vehicle use, that equals 1.8 tonnes of CO2. There's a conclusion here, and the powers that be really don't want you to crunch these numbers. It is. A Victorian house is roughly 3.2 times filthier CO2 equivalent emissions wise compared with an allegedly filthy diesel SUV. So how about governments just get their fucking priorities straight and stop bullshitting the public on the stuff that really matters if you want to cut greenhouse. If you parked two diesel sportages in front of such a house and then you vox pop the average passers by on what is actually filthier, the house behind or the cars in front, which way do you reckon most of those interviews would go? Not the way reality says, I'm sure, but in reality, cars are just a climate sideshow. We need to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, and we need to remove any and all barriers to net zero. That's multi-hat minister Big Lily again, to which I would respectfully retort, well, you're really not even going to get close unless you make the grid the number one priority. The zero emissions vehicle roadmap will get Victorians where they need to go. Please, enough. That's just being vexatious now. You dudes are missing the point. The grid is the problem. And if I were you, I would stop being misleading and deceptive. Like, just stop. Apart from the fact that this absurd document still spruiks the EV purchase incentives that that government just canned, that misleading deceptive term, zero emissions, in relation to vehicles, is bandied about roughly one billion times on those 88 pages. On this page right here, which is Big Lily's monument to deception, that hateful deceptive term appears on 14 occasions. Just ballparking that for context, okay? 14 times 88 pages equals roughly 1,200 instances of unqualified, misleading, deceptive, greenwashing, governmental horseshit. By comparison, this minister only managed 11 instances of that misleading, deceptive term on his page, like... He's never going to get anywhere. Like he had his chance and he only misled and deceived the public 11 times. 
poor effort, son. Grow up. But overall, well done and thank you, Victorian government, for scaling this technically challenging peak on the Himalaya of environmental horseshit. Not even Toyota, the national automotive gold medal winner at the misleading deception steeplechase for six years in a row from 2015 to 2020 inclusive, thanks to its falsehood fire sale out the front of the world's shittest DPF installation in the Hilux Fortuna and Prada. Not even those elite misleading deceivers at Toyota could hope to compete with the Victorian government in the greenwashing marathon. This so-called roadmap is a solid alternative to toilet tissue. But it just represents one case of a broader societal problem, which is actually quite serious. And that problem would be the complete collapse of trust in institutions. And you can't blame the public for that. Like, how can you trust a government that would make these kinds of batshit claims? Like, you read that document, and even if you don't have any scientific training, you know something's a bit off. It's like when vegans look at you with those big eyes, and they give you this spiel like, try this burger. It's made entirely of recycled plantation cardboard that was reused as toilet tissue. You really can't tell. It's not meat. Like, okay, dude, I get it. And I'm pleased that you like it. Nice Tesla. Also, congratulations and all that, but I'm really not ever going to join your boy band. The ACCC has something of an uphill battle on its hands, clearly, because the biggest bullshitters in the climate space are not businesses at all. They're governments, as you have just seen. The Victorian government is handing you this big fat bullshit sandwich, and they're clearly going to be offended if you don't chow right down on it, despite the fact that if they were a corporation, the ACCC would be preparing a significant barbed wire enema for them for being so disgracefully, repeatedly, excessively misleading and deceptive. Zero emissions is one of the biggest, most widespread lies of the modern age. Actually achieving that would be horrendous. Millions of people would die. And those who remain after that apocalypse, well, they'd all be going back to the frickin' Stone Age. Because, you know, thermodynamics.